Alright, so we're going to move on to the next part. And this is the actual uh, programming. But I do have to go back and change a couple of things. First thing is gravity. You want to take this and turn it into 50 instead of a thousand there. Get your time interval. And movement, we're going to do the same thing. Turn that to 50. This is a millisecond, so it's pretty darn fast. And then we're going to have to add one more timer, which I forgot to include. And we're going to rename this one. It's going to be our score. And now we can move on to programming it. It's going to be in the blocks that day. Alright, from this point we're actually going to start uh, making stuff move in here. And the first thing I always like to do is to make gravity. And the only thing that's going to have gravity is going to be the bird. So for this, I am going to take gravity by um, a timer. So I click on the gravity timer over here and grab one timer. And grab an image sprint and the move to function with x, y. Place it up there. For the image sprint, I'm just going to go ahead and, for, sorry for the Y. I don't know, wait, this is going up and down, so we're going to make a, a Z. There's the X, my, my bad. I'm all confused here. I need the X. It's going to just stay the same, so it'll move along the axis up and down. And it won't want to go side to side, so it's going to keep on moving into that same X position that it's already at. Now Y is all we want to actually change. So this we're going to need a math function. And in this case, we're going to want to manipulate to use an add function. Just trying to figure where the origin was. Origin's um, just so you know, I'll go back to the designer. Origin of the X is right here. So any addition to the Y will move him down and any addition to X will move him to the right hand side. It's confusing usually I'm used to you know the origin being down here and adding upward but it's not in the case of this. So every time we hit the The, uh, sorry, every time the timer goes off, we want the bird to go down. So every 50 milliseconds, it's going to go one head downwards. So in order to do that, we're going to take its original Y position. Let's go down here and grab the Y. Throw that right in there. We're going to want to add a value of 10. Get that F in that function. I'm going to type in 10 to that. So the bird will constantly want to fall. Now we want to get the bird to go back upwards. And in order to do this, we're going to want every time somebody touches the canvas, the whole entire thing, not just a bird, we're going to want the bird to jump upward. And also at the same time, I'm going to want to change the picture of the bird to the upwards looking bird. So that's why we get the effect that it's facing upwards. For me, 
the final path I was already just copying and paste right there is this but really whatever the file name that you have um, saved it to or uploaded it to this program you're going to want to have it the same exact way that way it changes it to that specific, specific folder as long as you uploaded it onto App Inventor it will recognize it and now we're going to want to call the move the bird so in this case I can just go here and duplicate that and bring it down here X is going to stay the same again, we don't want it moving side to side, just up and down. And we're going to manipulate the Y. And in this case, I don't even want to go down. I could go ahead and get a subtraction function, put that in there, but I'm lazy. I'm just going to negate the 50, and that'll be subtraction for the, boob to want, uh, the bird to move downward. Nice. Next thing we're going to want to do is now initialize all the branches here to their actual positions on the canvas. So we have exact coordinates to where they are. This is, you could go right ahead and just place them on there and hope for the best. The only thing is that they're not specifically um, spread apart from each other. One branch is going to start to catch up on the other and they're going to start to actually uh, and get smaller and smaller distance away from each other. So I can grab the screen initializer. And once again, we're going to be doing the move to function. I'm placing that here. Now I don't want the image sprint, so I'm just going to go down here and click branch one. And I don't want it to be left in the same X, the same Y, I want specific coordinates for these. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and grab our map function here and I'm going to set it as branch 1 at 110. The X direction and the Y Actually, we're going to just leave the Y the same. The Ys we're going to keep the same. Just leave them where, at, where they are. If you have any trouble with hitting the edges or something like that, you can go right ahead and just either move them by hand or type in real coordinates into the designer, and that will keep them locked in a position. And we're just going to go ahead and do that once again here. It's going to be branch number two, this one upside down, the Y will stay the same. I'm going to duplicate and do it again. It could use the design editor too, but this way it makes sure it doesn't move on you. I don't know if it really makes a difference, but whatever. Now they're evenly spaced. Next thing we're going to do is we want the trees to all start moving in a linear direction to the left. Now the bird's not going to move, but the trees will. So in order to do this, we want to go ahead and grab our movement timer. Same thing with gravity, but in this, set, this one we're going to make it want to move to the right all at the same time. So once again, get your move to functions. And X is not going to stay the same this time, it's going to actually change. The Y on the other hand though is going to stay the same. So we're going to go ahead and move that out. Put that in there. Once again, I'm being lazy. I'm just going to negate it. And 
and we're going to want to make it move two spaces or two pixels the actual thing it's actually doing here once again and you want to make sure you're doing the branches which I forgot to do that make sure they're all the same messed that up once and they all went all over the place on same thing here it's going to be B2 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 and do it again and do it again for B3 Done there. And also, what I do in this one, we can move the cloud. So, in order to move the cloud. We're going to do the same thing, but I want it to move a little bit slower, kind of give it the effect that it's in the background. Kind of like when you walk past the sun. So it was hanging. Go ahead and put that on there. And I'm going to go ahead and just move it one space, half the speed of it. And what else is moving on the screen? And the last thing we want to do is a bird falling back down picture. Simulate like the bird's actually falling downward. And for this, we're going to go ahead and call our bird, which I've nearly forgotten to label. And we're going to go ahead and grab the image with visible very image image picture. Except at the top, anywhere, doesn't really matter. And in my case, now the same name, but instead of two, I labeled my files number three. Now that will make it point downward. Once again, the turning direction of it, I'm just changing the image. This is a, you could rotate it around its axis, but you have to label the axis and all that kind of stuff. So by just doing it via picture, flipping back and forth, it makes it a lot easier, at least for me. Alright, so now this comes the actual uh, part of randomizing the trees coming out of here, because you don't want it to be the same exact thing, so every time we have it reappear back at its original spot, we want it to physically change in um, size and everything. So in order to do that we're going to want to set some variables to which we can start making some modifications to. I'm going to go ahead and initialize the, I'm call it TH for tree height and this is going to be um, the variable which holds the height for the trees. And in order to do that, you're going to interrupt your math and you want to get the random in integer. And I want pixel height anywhere from 50 to 200. 220, I think, would be good for my screen. So now I'll pick an, any random number from 50 to 220. A lot of different options. Now that we have that variable set, going to want to go ahead and start making it so when every image makes it to the end, it hits the edge and then is cycled back through to the start point. So for branch one, want to do is so when edge is reached you want to move the sprint 